In this video, we are going to be discussing the different types of graphs as well as how to set up a graph for a scientific investigation. First, let's recap. There's going to be three types of scientific variables. The first is a controlled variable, which are variables that are kept the same intentionally in an experiment. The second is an independent variable, which are variables that are changed intentionally or tested in an experiment. And the third is a dependent or responding variable. These are variables that are measured in an experiment and respond to the changes of the independent variable in the experiment. First, let's look how to set up your graph. Step one, identify the independent and dependent variables in your scientific question. A helpful way to do this is to find and circle the word effect or effect in the scientific problem. Let's take a look at this problem statement. How does temperature affect the number of ice cream bars sold? Let's first circle the word affect as the independent variable and dependent variables will be on opposite sides of the word affect. In this problem, the temperature is the independent variable because it is the variable that is changing and the dependent variable is the number of ice cream bars being sold because that is what is being measured in the experiment. After identifying the independent and dependent variables, it is time for step two. Put variables on the appropriate axis. For this, it is helpful to remember the mnemonic dry mix which stands for dependent variable is response to change and plotted on the y-axis. Manipulated to cause change, independent variable plotted on the x-axis. Or just remember that the independent variable goes on the x-axis and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. Let's go back to our ice cream sales example. In this example, the temperature would go on to the x-axis and the number of ice cream sold would go on to the Y, as temperature is our independent variable and number of ice cream bars sold is our dependent variable. Moving on to step three. Step three is where you as a scientist finishes up the graph. When finishing up the graph setup, remember tuna or make sure to include the title, units when appropriate, numbers when appropriate, and axis labels. Let's go back to our ice cream sales example. Here we need to first make a title that describes the information found in the graph, such as ice cream sales, or your y-axis versus your x-axis. In this case, number of ice cream sold versus temperature. Temperature here has units of Fahrenheit, so we include that in the label on the x-axis. Then we want to place numbers on our x-axis and our y-axis at an appropriate scale so that numbers are equally distributed and take up the majority of each axis. Lastly, in step four, you will need to plot the data depending on the type of data you may want to use different types of graphs. In plotting categories such as color as your independent variable, you will want a bar graph. When tracking a variable over time, you will want to use a line graph. And when dealing with percentages of parts of a whole, you would want to use a pie graph. In our ice cream sales example, we would want to use a line graph, but we will save that for another video. For now, let's see if you can identify what is wrong with these graphs. What is wrong with this graph? There's no title on this graph and a title is super important in order to tell the reader what the graph is about. As well as we have an improper scale on the y-axis. You'll notice that we start off by going up by one and then we change to going up by two and then even four. You wanna make sure that you are constantly going up by the same amount on each axis. What is wrong with this graph? There's no line connecting the dots, no numbers on the axes, 
as well as no title on this graph. What is wrong with this graph? No axes labels. You need to make sure that you're labeling both the X and the Y axis in order to identify what the independent and dependent variables are in your experiment. What is wrong with this graph? This should be a line graph because you're plotting time on the x-axis. As well as, really your scale should start from zero on the y-axis, where you see you're skipping straight to 80,000 and then up to 81,000 in just two blocks. What is wrong with this graph? No title and again an improper scale as you're not increasing by the same amount each block on your y-axis. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. 